Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, we're gonna check out this, the Kamoa X1 Pro T2. Quite a mouthful, but hopefully a good dosing pump. So thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And it has been quite some time since I've done a product review. Thankfully, that's because I've been able to get out and about, check out some store tours, as well as some reefers tanks. Now, on those store tours, I did come across a brand new dosing pump from Kamoa. Well, brand new here in Australia. And um, from what it seems like in recent history, Australia has been pretty fortunate to get the Kamoa gear before anywhere else in the world. So I figured it'd be a great opportunity to pick this pump up, show you how it works, show you the points of difference against some of the other dosing pumps on the market, and just generally see whether it's worth a $350 Australian price tag. So let's jump into it. All right, so first and foremost, I should explain the use case I have for this dosing pump here. What I've currently got on my calcium reactor is an Ecotech Versa, which has been working quite fine. I do have some other plans for that Ecotech Versa, so I wanted to replace the feed pump on that calcium reactor, and I was looking at options from Kamoa to see uh, which one would suit my needs. Now, currently I have the X1 Pro T, also a mouthful, running my Kalkwasser reactor, and that's been an absolute champion. The only problem with it is, as far as I'm concerned, is it has no local control. It's app only, there's no uh, display or dial or buttons or anything on the unit, so it's all controlled through your phone. Otherwise, it's a fantastic unit, very configurable, it's got a good wide range of operation, very consistent, very long lasting, works a treat, plus it's Wi-Fi controlled. But sometimes it's nice to be able to just, when you're working at your tank, to be able to reach in and adjust things on the fly. Now, the other option from Kamoa that is very well suited to calcium reactors or calcwasser reactors or sulfur reactors or automatic water changes, basically anything that requires a continuous duty dosing pump is their tried and tested FXSTP2. Now, it basically addresses everything I need or everything that I'm looking for in this pump here in that it is a very high quality dosing pump head, stepper motor design, Wi-Fi control, local screen and button. In fact, it's got everything one could really ask for. My only gripe with it is it's a pretty large unit. Now, when I say large, it's not, you know, it's not the size of a car, but it is a pretty big pump. And if you've got a few of them sitting around, they're gonna take up a bit of space. This guy here looks pretty much like the new and improved FX STP2. It's got all the same features, it's just reduced in size a little bit. So I'm curious to see if it stacks up to that high standard that FX STP2 puts out and see whether it's good enough for the job on my calcium reactor. So um, let's rip open the box and see what we get. All right, here we are, the Kamoa X1 Pro T2. It's a stepper motor pump. You can see it's got a display, it's got a button, it's got this nice high quality head on there. We've got Apple and Android apps available for it. App remote control, dosing pump, that's fairly obvious. Ideally recommended for calcium reactors, but uh, if you have a look at the rest of the box, yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's good for reefs, calcium reactors, also plants. We have uh, not much at all on there. We can see here it's good for dosing trace elements or calcium reactors. Then on the back, we get a little bit of features here. It uses a stepper motor with a uh, Farmed BPT tube for long-term stable operation. It's got local control and app remote control for both iOS and Android. Flow calibration, it's got a memory function now. This is important. If the power goes off, it will return back to the previous state when power comes back on, which is super important. We've got um, setting parameters are saved and not lost if the power goes off. Well, those two dot points are kind of the same. It's got the feature that a lot of the Kamoa ones do now and that it counts the uh, service hours on the tube so you know when to replace it. And then uh, last but not least, it's upgrade firmware. You can. It's firmware upgradable via OTA. Anyway, enough of the stats on the box. Let's uh, rip it open and see what we get. Grab the uh, obvious unit out first. That is the pump itself. And you can see in my hand there, it's pretty small, considerably smaller than the FX STP2, maybe a touch larger. In fact, it's pretty much just the height of the display taller than the uh, X1 Pro T, the first one. So, um, They've managed to keep this pretty small. One thing I did notice, it's 24 volt DC, not 12 volt DC, which um, which is different from the Kamoa X1 Pro T, the first version, it was 12 volts, this is 24. So um, that's a point of difference. And it does have this uh, head that you can remove without any screws. It's still got the, uh, I guess the uh, flat side on the shaft there and the, uh, the actual 
housing of the rollers turns rather than just trying to rely on a smooth shaft in the middle turning the rollers. So um, that looks pretty decent. Let's pop him back on. And I assume that means you could probably put the head on in um, different locations, although I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the head back on. Okay, it clicks back on okay. All right, let's see what else we get. Uh, we've got the uh, power adapter, no surprise there. Yep, pretty standard operation there. I'm not sure how well it's gonna come up on camera, but it is a uh, 24 volt, 1.9 amp. We get some silicon tubing, which comes in two different sizes. We've got a fairly large size there. It doesn't say, just says it's number 17. It looks about eight mil to me on there. And uh, then we've got the smaller one here, which is number 16, which looks closer to your sort of six mil or quarter inch there, but um, we'll see what we do with those. And then in here, it looks like we've got a uh, 17 to 16 adapter there. So you go from the small side to the large side. And then we have these little bits here that I think are gonna screw onto the, uh, yeah, they will, they actually screw onto there. So once you've attached your hose, you can actually quick disconnect the hoses from the pump. Nice little touch. We get some uh, instructions, which for all intensive purposes look pretty straightforward. A lot of fine print, but we won't worry about that too much. Last but not least, you get the famous Kamoa lubricant, which uh, is obviously used for your pumps and nothing else. All right, now as described earlier, you get these little uh, screw fittings here, which just screw onto those fittings there, which allow you to put that smaller hose on there. Now that's gonna just slip on there nicely. If I can get a bit of it out, that will do the trick there. And they should just fit on nice and snug on there. Now the trick with that is then if you need to remove these, you can just twist that off, twist it back on. You don't have to worry about wearing out that uh, silicon joiner there by pulling it off and pushing it back over that barb again, or you can zip tie it on if you want to, to get a really nice tight fitment. These also come, oh, it is a nice tight fitment with uh, these little adapters here, which allow you to go the uh, thin hose on one side and then fit up the larger silicon on the other side. Just like that. Not overly sure why you'd want to run this larger hose, but maybe for a Kalkwasser or something like that. If you didn't want to have a long run of the smaller hose, you're worried about um, you know, some slurry getting stuck in there and clogging, you could run the larger hose. But um, for me, the smaller hose with some adapters onto some John Guest tubing will do the job just nicely. All right, next up, what I like to do with these Kamoa pumps is pull them apart and see uh, what makes them tick. Let's see if we can... Yeah, well, okay, you can see we've got a pretty high quality, large stepper motor in there. Pretty serious amount of uh, circuitry in here. Uh, all looks fairly user replaceable should you need to. All decent uh, connectors there, which should be easy enough to operate. But it does look to be a high quality motor. You see nice bearings in the back here. All looks to be pretty good. So while they've made it a small unit, there's not a lot of room to spare. I guess they probably could have tr maybe gone a little bit wider and put the display and button on the side here rather than up the top and maybe cut this down. But there's really not that much space to spare. So uh, good job, Kamoa. All right, here we are, the moment of truth. You can see the uh, X1 Pro T, the uh, first edition, if you'd call it that, sitting up here running my Kalkwasser reactor, and it's been doing a fantastic job. But uh, I've switched out the Ecotech Versa on, on the calcium reactor here. We've got the Kamoa X1 Pro T2, the uh, second iteration of this guy. And it's, when you see them next to each other, I'll just move my little uh, motion sensor there. You can see the similarities between the two. They're both a black body. They've got this blue pump head the yellow uh, central wheel. They have the same, what appears to be the same sort of stepper motor inside them. Really the only difference is the local control and display. So um, let's fire this guy up. If I can find where I put the power lead, there it is. And it's off and running. Okay, now I haven't connected this to my phone or anything yet. So I'm not sure if I can locally control it, but let's give it a try. Oh, I can. Well, that's nifty to know because not everyone wants to control these things through their uh, smartphone. Sometimes just plugging something in and um, look at that, 1.8 mil liters a minute. That's awesome. You can turn it right down. Let's turn it even slower. Yeah, what I was thinking, sometimes people don't always want to control things through um, the cloud or through their phone or through an app or something like that. Sometimes they just want to be able to dial it on the machine and off they go. And um, 
let's crank this boy up and All right, it looks like 85 milliliters a minute is its max speed and um, you probably wouldn't want to be running it that long all the time. It'd probably be pretty intense on the unit. I'm suspecting I'll probably be running this guy around uh, the, probably around the 10 to 15 mil a minute mark. Let's just dial him into, the dial is interesting to use. It's when you turn it fast, it moves uh, large numbers. You turn it slow, it turns points. Turn it a little bit more, it went back up. It's going up, that's odd. There we go, 12 mil a minute. The pump head's still turning at a reasonable speed for that, so um, I'm gonna roll with that. What I'm gonna do now is grab my phone, I'll do a re screen recording so you can see how I go about adding this into the app to join the uh, X1 Pro T and the uh, X4 Pro over here. So um, let's give it a burl and see how easy it is. All right, so I'm gonna open up the Kamoa Remote app. It is important that you use that app and then click on the plus in the top right-hand corner there. That is gonna give me a list of items that I can pick from to add to my device listing. Now, right down the bottom of that list is going to be the Kamoa X1 Pro T2, which is the unit we are obviously adding. So I'm gonna click on that. It's now gonna ask me to ensure that I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And at this point, I'd like to remind everyone to ensure you are connected to the 2.4 gigahertz network, not your five gigahertz network. And it's gonna ask you for the password for that Wi-Fi. Now, thankfully for me, it doesn't show on screen, but um, well, it doesn't when you're doing a screen recording, but it does when you are putting it in the app locally. Now that I've done that, it's going to ask me to go to the device and click into the menu, go across to Wi-Fi. Once in Wi-Fi, click the button, head over to AP set and press the button again. Once your device is showing AP setting on screen, you can click that blue button on your app and uh, it will progress to the next stage. So I've now done that. Now it's telling me I need to go back to my Wi-Fi list and find the Kamoa Wi-Fi address. So uh, there it is there. I'm going to click on that one. There's no password required for that. I can now go back to the app, which will then start to bind these two together. So now that it's done that, it's going to start connecting them together and it's going to remind me that I need to go back over to my Wi-Fi settings and set back to my home Wi-Fi address because it's going to need an internet connection now to finish off this setting. Thankfully for me, it's already connected back to my 2.4 gigahertz network. And normally I find with Kamoa products, it doesn't even get to 100% before successful. Yep, there we go. At 14%, it was successful. This is now going to be added to my device listing along with my Kalkwasser reactor and of course my uh, X4 Pro for my uh, micro element dosing. And uh, there it is. We've now got the new, Kalk was, uh, the new calcium reactor pump there. Now I can simply click on the uh, flow setting there to change what I want it to be. You can see I've got a minimum of 0.0, .0 a maximum of 85. I can set that to 15. I can stop the pump if I wish to. I can also jump in, change that to 10. What is important here is whichever method you use to change the setting last is whichever one it will take advantage of. So if you change it locally at the pump, it's going to override whatever settings you put in the app. And if you change it in the app, it's gonna override whatever settings you put on the device. All right, now that the pump is actually up and running, I can show you something pretty cool about it. You can see you get this little owl just dancing left to right on there when it's locked, which basically means if you bump this, nothing's gonna happen. You have to press the button and then you come back in. Now, what I love at the moment is, I'm not sure how well you can see it on screen, but it says currently running five mil a minute. Now, I can update that. Let's say I wanna make that 8.5 mil a minute that will now hold that setting and that will be reflected on the phone. Conversely, if I'm on the phone and I change the 8.5 back to five mil a minute, you'll see that this will update, the speed will slow down and the screen will reflect to five mil a minute. It's pretty cool. Another thing I found quite interesting that even at a very slow drip rate, where we're at five mil a minute and on something like a calcium reactor where there is quite a little bit of uh, pressure variance as the pump inside runs around, you've got CO2 gases getting injected in. We've still got a very consistent uh, drip rate and that's through a decent meter and a half length of outlet hose from the calcium reactor. So I know it's gonna be nice and consistent when I set it to those ultra low speeds. 
All right, guys, it's been about a month now since I installed the Kamoa X1 Pro T2 in my calcium reactor. I've got some closing thoughts, both some cons and some pros that I'd like to go over with you, which may help you decide whether this pump is suitable for your needs or not. Let's start off with the cons. All right, the cons that I have, I've got two, one relatively serious and one probably a little bit nitpicky, but let's jump into them. We'll start off with a nitpicky one. I do wish that these pumps came with some John Guest tubing adapters. I have to use the ones out of my Versa packets. I'll put the link to them. They're a stem to barb adapter. You can buy them online, but I just wish that these guys came with them out of the box because um, I don't know about you, but I find most people run things like this on John Guest tubing. It's just so much more forgiving and adaptable and you got fittings, push fittings, all the stuff you need rather than using soft silicon tubing. But um, maybe that's just me and that is my nitpicky con. Moving on to the actual con, which it's not that big of a deal, but it was a little bit annoying. This guy here has got a uh, button and a display. The display works a treat. The button and dial I did find to be a little bit finicky at times. Sometimes you turn it and get absolutely nowhere at all with the settings. Sometimes you turn it and you jump one mil, two mil, five mil. Other times you turn it and you'd go the wrong way. You'd go from like, you'd be turning it down and it'd go from 25.0 to 25.1. And I'm like, no, I'm turning it down. Why that is, I don't really know. And it's not a huge deal because eventually you will get the setting you need. And of course you can rip out your phone and adjust it precisely there, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the T2. The whole idea of picking this guy up for a few extra dollars over the T1 is that it has a display that you can adjust things locally without having to get your phone out. So it's not a big deal. It just takes a few seconds longer than I feel it probably should. All right, now moving on to the cons and there are no shortage of cons for this uh, pump. Uh, did I just say cons? I obviously mean pros. Carry on. But I want to try and keep it as short and precise as I can for you. First of all, I love the form factor of it. I love the way where it sits there and um, it's very quiet. It just sits on top of your reactor or your sump or a shelf or wherever you want it. Just sits there. You've got easy visibility to that uh, display and that little dial. The outlets, I believe, can be turned around because I could put the head on a few different ways so you can have that hose pointing any direction you need. It just really fits in quite well. All right, secondly, I love the preciseness and consistency of it. Now that's probably two separate pros, but uh, in interest sakes of keeping things fair with two pros and two cons, I do love that I can adjust this at 0.1 milliliter at a time. It's so much easier than counting drops or measuring things with a uh, cylinder if you're trying to dial in something like a calcium reactor or sulfur reactor. You literally put in 7.6 mil a minute, and then when you want to slow it down, you go 7.5 or 7.4 or 2.1, whatever you want, it's super precise. Coinciding with that, it's very consistent, even on something like a calcium reactor where you've got all sorts of different pressures going on inside that reactor. You've got uh, water being fed into it, you've got CO2 being fed into it, you've got a recirculating pump pushing water around, all sorts of coral bones and things in there. Yet my ra uh, effluent rate remained very consistent, which is exactly what you want. You don't want this thing sort of surging a bit of water and then slowing down and then surging again. It was a very consistent drip or trickle the entire time, which is exactly what I want in a pump like this. It's going to be continuous duty 24 seven. All right, guys, I'll wrap things up there. I hope you enjoyed the video. In summary, I think the Kamoa X1 Pro T2 is a fantastic pump option out there, particularly for those that aren't keen on using their phone or a computer or a tablet to make some simple setting changes. Having that display and button there is an absolute flashback to the past with a merging of modern technology and an absolutely robust, silent and very precise dosing pump. Perfect for calcium reactors, calcos, sulfur reactors, automatic water changes. The use cases are endless for these guys. And at $350 Australian, whilst that's not the cheapest option out there, I didn't think it was too crazy. You could pick up two of these for $700, you get yourself a very robust automatic water change system. Or of course, you wanna feed just one pump on a calcium reactor, calcos, or sulfur, whatever you wanna do, it's gonna do it perfectly. The app was easy to use and, um, you don't even need to use the app if you don't want to. You can do it on the display itself. So whether it suits you guys or not, that's entirely up to you. I hope you enjoyed the video though, giving you a bit of an oversight as to what's involved with the Kamoa X1 Pro T2. A huge mouthful of a name, but a pretty quality little pump. If you enjoyed the video, guys, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, comments, feedback, pop it in the comments section down below. If you don't know, I personally reply to each and every comment there, so it is the best way to get hold of me. Other than that, guys, till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.